Can you hear me now? Okay, so you can hear me with the headset. Awesome. <laughs> All right, we're just gonna be a few minutes. We're just getting everybody signed in. All right. Just making sure everyone joined us. All right. Hi, Brittany. Hi, Alicia. Hi, Carolyn. Hello. And we're just waiting for Heather to come in. While we're waiting, I wanted to uh, thank you folks all for coming to this session um, where we're going to be talking about cooperative education and experiential learning, um, in particular as it relates to the arts and social sciences here at the University of Guelph. Uh, so we're just waiting for our guest who's going to talk to us a little bit about co-op and then we'll get started. Um, as you would have seen, the session is being recorded. Um, so. Uh, important to note and uh, the sessions will be available afterwards if you do want to review any of the uh, things that were covered today as well. I see Heather. Awesome. Hi, Heather. I am going to assume that Heather will. Yes, I'm here. Sorry. Hi, Heather. Hi, awesome. Hi, sorry. I'm just downloading the blur. All righty. So um, welcome, everyone. My name is Daniel Poulin, and I am the Manager of Experiential Learning Recognition and Development here at the University of Guelph. Uh, welcome so much to Campus Days. Glad you could join us. Um, and again, we're going to be talking about cooperative education, which is a really big um, program uh, at the University of Guelph, but we'll also be talking about all of the other types of experiential learning outside of cooperative education that you can get involved with as well. Um, so you're going to hear from myself, and I'm going to be talking about experiential learning. You're going to hear from Heather, who is uh, one of our staff members, who is going to talk to you about co-op. And then we also have two students, Carolyn and Alicia, um, who are going to share their own experiences um, being students involved with co-op and experiential learning on campus. We're also joined with by our colleague, Brittany, um, who is going to be watching the chat window. So if throughout the presentation you have any questions, um, feel free to drop those right into the chat window. Um, Brittany is going to collect them and after each kind of section, um, we'll take up any questions that are related to that kind of section there. Um, so the session's about an hour long. Um, we're going to start with co-op. Um, so we're going to hear from Heather and then we'll hear from um, Carolyn. And then after that, I'm going to talk about Yell and we'll hear from Alicia. Um, we are going to, uh, we would ask that you folks keep your mics off and your cameras off during the panel, um, just so that we can, uh, it, that the focus will be on the folks speaking. However, when we um, do get to the very end and we have some questions and answers, um, if you feel more comfortable unmuting yourself and asking the question verbally, we can do that. But during the panel, what we'd ask you to do is just pop the um, questions into the chat window. That would be awesome. Um, and, just trying to see if there's anything else. Um, if we can't, for whatever reason, get to uh, the question that you have or you have questions afterwards, um, you can always email us at recruit 
at uoguelph.ca. And uh, once Heather uh, gets started with her chatting, I'll drop that link into the chat window as well. Uh, so I think that is all I'm going to say for our intro. Uh, let's get into the meat and potatoes of today's presentation. I'm going to pass it over to Heather, who's going to talk to you all about the co-op program here at Guelph. Heather. Hi, Daniel. Thank you so much. And thank you to everyone for joining us today and considering the University of Guelph as a option for you. So some of you may or may not be aware of the co-op program at the University of Guelph. So I'm going to give a general overview of how co-op works, give a couple examples of Bachelor of Arts programs um, and social studies, and then move forward to speaking to an actual co-op student. So start off with uh, co-op is available to any student who applies to the University of Guelph, though it is a competitive process. So we recommend that if you're interested in co-op, you hopefully selected co-op on your application if you're looking at applying for fall 2023. You would have seen this on your OEAC application when you were looking at applying to different universities, you would have seen co-op as an option. Um, if you are a grade 10 or 11 student, now you know. Make sure you look at applying to co-op on your OEAP application. And the reason that we encourage you to do this is because we have a lot of people interested in co-op and we take most of our admissions straight from high school. So you wanna make sure that you indicate right away that you're interested in the co-op program. If you are accepted into the co-op program, your co-op experience will begin starting during your first month at the University of Guelph. You'll receive an email from our office welcoming you to the university and letting you know what you can expect during your co-op experience. We'll encourage you to get involved in campus activities like sports and clubs and engage in your classes. So that way you can start building that experience that's gonna be really vital for your co-op job search. Depending on your co-op program, in, you may take co-op 1100 in the winter semester of your first year or the fall semester of your second year. Co-op 1100 is a mandatory program or a mandatory course that is required that all co-op students take. And the purpose of the course is help you to help you prepare for your co-op job search work term. So we'll go over how to develop a competitive resume, cover letter, interview skills, and introduce you to the entire co-op process. Myself and another instructor named Suzanne facilitate that course, and it is a online course, and it is a course that you take on top of your already existing course load. The reason why you do that is because it's simulating what it's going to be like do, during your first work search term. So you do need to pass that course with a 70%, and then you move forward into your work search term. So some of you may start your first work search term in the summer or the fall of your second year. For some of you, it will be the summer between your second and your third year. And our work terms range anywhere between four and eight months. Sometimes they're back to back, sometimes they're separate. And we can talk more about that or our co-op student can speak more to that in their experience. And during your job search term, which is where you're looking for your first work search term, you have the support of co-op coordinators that are directly related to your program. So they're there to help you with any applications that you need to create or questions you have about employers. Same thing when you're going through the course. Myself and Suzanne will be there to support you as well as we have a team of peer helpers, career advisors, lots of people to help you on your co-op journey. Now, if you're wondering, oh man, I'm watching this and I didn't select co-op on my OYAC application, can I apply? Yes, you can still apply. There is something called in-course admission. And we take applications for that in both the fall and the winter semesters, but the programs differ for when we accept applications. So if you know you're coming to the University of Guelph this fall, I strongly encourage you to email our office the first month of September that you're there if you're interested in co-op and not already signed up and say, hey, I'm interested in co-op. What do I do? and we'll be able to walk you through the application process. I do wanna remind everyone that it is a competitive process. And the reason why that is, is because it's a competitive job search. These jobs are paid positions. You are a paid employee by whatever company you work for. So it's important that you learn how to compete. So you're gonna to have to compete to get into the co-op program. And that's the purpose of Co-op 1100 as well, is to teach you how to create competitive resumes, cover letters, and prepare your interview skills that are related from your academics and other related experience to help you get your first work term opportunity. So I'll go through a couple of the programs that we offer. Uh, one of our newest ones is anthropology. Uh, some students may be you know, signed up for that now or looking at that as a course. So you're probably wondering what kind of job opportunities could I do with an anthropology degree? 
So some of them include workplace engagement officer. So in this role, you would participate in campaign activities, meetings, including training programs, information sessions, and events. You would monitor and report on campaign activities, build personal relationships with volunteer, and deliver training and presentations to volunteers and donors. Also, there's the co-op, community co-op reach, reach, reach out student. This is where you would attend outreach events and through the city and included at various schools, as well as business parks, transit locations, and onboard buses to target audiences about information about programs and other services. So as you can see, there's a lot of social service focus involved in the anthropology program. Now, criminal justice and policy tends to be a very popular program among our students. It's one of our more recent co-op programs as well. So some job postings with that include junior policy analysts, uh, in this role, you conduct research, analyze to support policy reviews and developments, support program implementations, and the preparedness of reports and presentations for management. You support stakeholders engagement and provincial consultant exercises, as well as there's crime, crime analysis. In this role, you do data cleansing, compiling of that crime data, analyzation of crime, collisions, enforcement data to assist in development of proactive initiatives to enhance public safety as well as policy student would be another example as well, where you conduct research, analyzation to inform policy development. So those are two of our very popular Bachelor of Arts programs, an example of the co-op positions you could be looking at. Now, it's important to keep in mind that these co-op positions could be anywhere across the province of Ontario. So being involved in the co-op program can mean that you may have to commute, you may have to relocate in order to complete one of these co-op opportunities. Now, who's better to talk about co-op and their experience than our co-op students. So I'm gonna pass this over to Carolyn, who's going to talk a little bit about her experience as a co-op student and why she chose co-op at the University of Wealth. Carolyn? Thanks so much, Heather. Hi, everybody. My name is Caroline Valadeo. I'm a third year political science uh, co-op student at the University of Guelph, and I'm also a uh, corporate affairs intern at Brazilian mining company, um, valet. Um, so just to give everybody some background, I've completed two work terms. Um, and for those that are unfamiliar with the co-op logistics, uh, as Heather pointed out, it's when you work for a semester instead of studying. Um, my first work term was uh, September 20, or sorry, the summer of 2021. And then the following was the fall of 2021. So I did my work terms back to back, and I opted to do an eight month uh, work term at valet. And I've been there ever since. So it's just coming up on a year uh, at the company uh, in a few months, which is exciting. Um, I also want to point out that I'm sincere when I say that I would could never imagine the experience, the experiences I've been given without co-op. Um, at Valet, I work in uh, different areas of the business, ranging from government relations, social performance, Indigenous relations and communications, and everything in between. I've dipped my toes into almost every aspect of the business on a corporate side. And I'm thankfully uh, now an employee um, uh, working part-time while studying. Um, and I'll resume to my uh, full-time duties um, in the summer. So co-op has really given me this opportunity, which has absolutely transformed uh, my student and my professional experience and has given me a career option that I could have never imagined. Um, on that note, co-op has taught me to think outside of the box when it comes to career options. Um, when I was in high school, I was set on one path and one path only, which was to get admitted into political science uh, and then get a co-op position somewhere in the public sector working for either the federal or the provincial government. Uh, but the reality is that there are so many options that I didn't even realize existed. Um, there's a breadth of job opportunities and uh, the co-op job searches will really push you to think outside of the box, which is exactly what happened to me. Um, you know, three or four years ago, I would have never imagined that I'd be employed at a mining company in downtown Toronto, but I, I think that it was the best thing that ended up happening uh, for my academic experience and my, and my professional experience uh, so far. Um, the way that the co-op faculty uh, pre prepares you for the job market um, it sets you up for the for the utmost success. Uh, they give you the tools to ensure you have effective resume, cover letter, and interview skills um, that are exactly in line with what companies expect from not only students, but every prospective employee. Um, I just want to highlight three reasons why I think co-op has been valuable to me and why I know that it will be valuable to some of you here today. Um, the first one is job experience. Uh, being a co-op student gives you a significant competitive advantage upon your peers and others in the job market um, in post-graduation. Um, when prospective employers are filtering through resumes, they probably don't expect a fresh graduate to have significant experience under their belt. 
Um, but with co-op, I believe you're placed at a significant advantage, not only for the years of experience that you may accumulate and gain, but the quality of experience that you'll gain, no matter what industry you end up. You know, you'll you'll take something away from every every job and every task that you're given. Um, and the second one is networking. Uh, as a student, you probably don't have the largest network at the minute, and that's okay. You're not really expected to. Uh, the reality is that most people do not start networking until post-graduation, but with co-op, you'll meet and you may have the opportunity to make a positive impact on so many people in your industry, no matter what industry it is. Um, and this can aid you significantly uh, once, once you graduate. Not only does the job experience help you, but the connections you make can make all the difference once you secure that University of uh, Guelph diploma. Um, uh, so the third one is preparation. Uh, as touched on before, the co-op faculty gives you all the tools to succeed in your job searches and your journey as a young professional. Uh, before taking Co-op 1 1000, which is a mandatory course for students, as Heather pointed out, I thought I had a good resume and cover, cover letter writing skills, but it turns out that they weren't as good as I originally thought. Um, Co-op 1 1000 gives you the techniques to perfect your approach to the job market and uh, highlights how you can make yourself stand out in the virtual or the physical resume pile. Um, so that all being said, I'm, I'm definitely proud to be a, a Guelph Griffin and I feel lucky to be a co-op student at Guelph, um, given everything that I've experienced um, and I continue to experience um, at my job at Ballet. So thanks so much and I'll pass it over to Daniel now. Thank you so much, Carolyn. I'm wondering if there are any questions from our audience about co-op. Um, if you uh, have any questions, you can pop them into that chat window. Um, down below and we will ask them out loud. Um, but uh, Heather, did you want to just um, just list maybe which programs in arts have the co-op major? Absolutely. And I'll also discuss some common questions that are asked. So before I yeah. get to that, a really common question we get, especially now that um, the pandemic seems to be coming to an end and traveling seems to be becoming more common is international co-op work terms. Um, for the past two years, my answer has been, yes, we've had them in the past, but unfortunately, we don't have them right now. Um, that is obviously changing as the world changes. So we have had international students go abroad for co-op work terms. So to define what abroad is, abroad is outside of Canada. So, you know, if you're thinking, oh, I, I would love to go do a work term in British Columbia, that's that's not abroad, that's within Canada. Um, so there would be any additional paperwork that you would need to get in order to go to British Columbia. If you're a Canadian student, um, you wouldn't have any struggles with that. If you're an international student, you may want to speak to your international student advisor just to make sure um, that there wouldn't be any concerns with you doing that. But otherwise, um, if anything domestic, you can definitely do. We have students that choose to go to other provinces for work terms, uh, especially marine biology students may want to go, well, that's not arts, but that's an example of someone that would want to go abroad. Um, and we do have other students that want to choose to travel within Canada. Now, abroad does include the United States. Uh, and more commonly, it includes other countries like Australia it tends to be a popular country that students may want to go to to do a work term. So if you are looking at doing an international work term, this is something that you want to start thinking about when you first arrive at the University of Guelph. I recommend emailing our Recruit Guelph email address and that will get you in contact with myself and Suzanne and we'll walk you through what your co-op work and academic sequence looks like because every co-op student is required to follow their programs work and academic sequence. So you're probably wondering, well, what is that? That indicates when you will be working and when you will be in co-op. So it's important that you follow that when doing your international work term search. So you're going to have to select the term. Uh, you're going to have to obviously select the country and find out what work requirements are needed for that country. So vaccinations, permits may be required, as well as you're on your own for searching for your own job. Uh, we don't search internationally for students because we can't guarantee that students will be able to work in that country, but you are welcome to. Um, in order for that job to be approved, it needs to be related to your academic degree. It needs to be at least 420 hours in length and ideally paid, especially if you're going overseas. It's important that you're being paid so you'll be able to obviously find accommodations and meals when you are abroad. So it is possible. It is possible, but it does require some work on your part. Um, I see that we have a question in the chat. Is that correct? We have actually several questions. Okay. Uh, so my first question that has come from us is what is the difference between an internship 
a co-op? Very good question. Um, a lot of people use them interchangeably, but I can give you the University of Guelph's definition that's different. So when it comes to the co-op program, we require any of our co-op work terms, whether the employer chooses to call it an internship or not, to be paid and to be related to the academic degree and that you need to be an employee of that company. Sometimes inter internships, especially internationally, you are not paid. So we do require our students to be paid. So that would be the biggest difference. But a lot of times employers use co-op and internship interchangeably. So if you had any questions about a specific opportunity, you would either redress that to myself and Suzanne if you were in co-op 1100 or your co-op coordinator. Next question for you is, um... Um, so we have somebody that has accepted their offer um, to co-op psych, and they were wondering if this means they're guaranteed a job or if there's a chance that they won't get a job as a co-op. Very good question. Um, so as you know, I've stated a couple of times that co-op is competitive. So you are going to have to compete for a job, much like you will in the workforce when you graduate. Unfortunately, jobs aren't guaranteed in the workforce either when we graduate. But uh, we can say that we have a very high rate of students obtaining co-op opportunities. Typically, if you follow the guidelines from Co-op 1100, as Carolyn talked about, and revise your resume and cover letter so it's competitive, you connect with your co-op coordinator. If you're struggling with your job search, you apply to jobs often and frequently. You understand that you may have to commute, for example. Um, there may be a lot of jobs in the GTA that you're interested in, and if you don't live in the direct GTA or you do, you may have to take public transit or relocate for work. So, it's not like high school where you're placed because it's not paid, right? A, a co-op teacher placed you somewhere and you work there. This is a actual job. So like any kind of job market, you do have to compete for it. But I can say we have a high success rate. Um, we will match a student's engagement and we will work with them as hard as we can to help them get that co-op work term. You know, if for some reason, um, due to circumstances beyond the student's control, sometimes we have students that have become ill or have to take care of a family member, sometimes stuff happens, you can miss a co-op work term and we can work with you on that. But ideally, most of our students do find co-op work term positions, but they definitely have to put the work in, just like you're going to at a, a work term opportunity. Um, I have a question here, and this may end up um, being an admissions question, um, but it's kind of a two-part question. So the first, okay. this is fairly easy. If a student defers their admission in the fall to the winter, does that include, will their co-op um, join that deferral? Like, can they still join in at that point? Yeah, I would, I would assume yes, but I would contact admissions and double okay. check with that. Um, because yeah, I, I can't give a set answer because unfortunately awesome. I don't handle the admission piece. <laughs> yeah. And so I'm assuming that would be the same for questions about um, accessing letters for study permits. Yeah, unfortunately, we can't answer that. Um, we, when we have a, well, I can say when we have an international student who needs a letter that's a co-op student, we can provide them with that, um, saying that they do have a work permit, but you would already have to be registered in the co-op program. You would just email us what, you know, we have that, a completely different process than what maybe you would need to do for admissions. Awesome. So I will uh, email it. If that is your question, I'll send you a private message with the link um, for admissions. And then our last question that we have um, is, what are some co-op jobs available for criminology or CJPP students? Well, I did mention them earlier, the crime analysis role, um, as well as there's sometimes some stuff that kind of blends over with um, public pol or um, political science as well. They tend to work very closely together. We talked about junior policy analysts earlier where you uh, analyze um, crime data to see where trends would be. You would be working with a police service in order to do that, as well as a policy student may look at policies for the Canada Revenue Agency, the Canadian Food Inspector Agency, the Canadian Intellectual Property um, Office, the Guelph Police Services, Manual Life Financial Corporate, Ministry of Government and Consumer Services, Peel Regional Police, TD, TD Paint Group, and Workplace Safety 
and Insurance Board are a couple of our employers that we're currently working with right now. I'm wondering if this person has questions about law school um, and what it would be in order to become a lawyer, if this program will help you with that. Um, I think definitely speaking with one of our career advisors when you start at the University of Guelph would be a great idea to have that conversation. Um, and then you could work with your co-op coordinator of what kind of roles you would want to do. If that's not where your question is going, then there's lots of other policy opportunities that would be available to you, data analyst opportunities that would be available to you. And as we said, there's you know something even like the Workplace Safety and Insurance Board as well. And with all the different guidelines that have changed after the global pandemic that we've had, there's lots of opportunities in order for policy enforcement. So that may be some call-up goals that you would be interested in. Awesome, and we did have one more question come in to me and it is, is it common for students to live in residence during a co-op term? Very good question. Um, I'll be honest, not a lot of students in my experience, maybe Carolyn and Matthew could speak to this better than I could because I am not a student currently at the University of Guelph. Uh, don't usually live in residence after their first year. I believe most students there typically tend to be first years. And during that first year, you're not on co-op work term. You're either on an academic term only, or depending on your program, you may be taking co-op 1100, but you're not going anywhere on a work term. So no, but there are students who do choose to stay in residence. And if you have an opportunity that is within Guelph or on the Guelph campus, yes, that could definitely be a likelihood. Uh, but a lot of students either tend to live off campus or perhaps they'll go live at home if for say they live in Ottawa and the work term opportunity is closer to Ottawa, they may go home and live there. So, um, but during first year, you're not doing co-op and that's typically when students are in residence. So that would be, I guess, the best answer I can give in order for this question. And uh, there are some services on campus too. So if you are, let's say, um, uh, leasing a place in Guelph for a full 12 months, and then you are going to another city for four months, um, there are some services that can help you figure out how to sublet your place, um, how to find a sublet in another place. Um, so when it does come to all the housing kind of situations or transportation and stuff, um, we can definitely provide you with some resources around that um, as well as you try to figure it out. But it's pretty common. Carolyn, in your experience, did you, um, uh, did you sublet a place in Guelph and move? How did you na navigate your living arrangements while doing your co-op? Yeah, sure. Um, so I am, I live closer to Guelph, so I, I didn't, I was never in res, so I was commuting throughout my academic career. But um, when I started at Ballet in, in uh, the summer semester, it was, everybody was working from home. So they provided all the materials to me and I was working from home, still doing that now. And the office is just starting to open up now. But uh, yeah, uh, in experience, I, people have been subletting and, you know, traveling when it's required. But in my experience, I've been working from home. So so yeah. As I asked that, I was like, you were probably working from home. <laughs> like, <laughs> so, that's awesome. Um, I think what we'll do is we'll move on now to the experiential learning um, section of the presentation. And then if there are any other questions, co-op or EL related, we should have a little bit of time at the end to go through and kind of collect all those questions. So, um, so I'm gonna tell you a little bit about experiential learning in general. Um, so it's it co-op is a very specific type, type of experiential learning that we have at Guelph, and it's one of 21 types. So co-op's probably our biggest experiential learning type on campus, um, and it's a really important program and a really great one, but it's not the only way um, as a student you can get uh, that practical work, real, real world context kind of experience. Um, so that's particularly for folks that are looking at a program that doesn't have co-op or are maybe not interested in taking the co-op option as part of their program. Um, but this is also goes out to students in co-op because a lot of these experiences you can do while you're on your academic terms. And that will just continue to help you develop and build those skills that um, are needed for life kind of during and, and after university. Um, so we usually talk about experiential learning in two big categories, curricular and co-curricular. So curricular experiential learning is anything that's, that you're getting credit for. So it's typically a course. Um, co-op is considered curricular because you do get credit for co-op um, at Guelph. Uh, however, other examples of curricular experiential learning can include um, independent research projects, so a lot of programs at the fourth year level have a thesis or a, um, in, the, in the case of arts, it could have a major creation, like a portfolio creation course. Um, 
where you're creating kind of your work, et cetera. And so, um, so that is an opportunity for students to gain kind of independent um, research and building experience with um, the guidance of a faculty member. We also have community engaged learning courses where you work directly with community partners. Um, we have field courses where you travel with uh, a group of your um, classmates and you collect data on a real world issue and analyze that data and submit kind of a report at the end. And often those are done in collaboration with communities or with um, employer partners. Uh, we also have um, practicum courses. So when we had a question about internships and externships, um, so we have what we call a professional practice, which are all those courses where you get to um, job shadow or you get to work alongside a professional in the field. Um, most notably are in social sciences are courses like um, adult development um, and applied nutri human nutrition. Those programs all have embedded uh, practicums into them um, as well. Uh, and there are other different uh, types of experiential learning as well that's in a course. And I, I'm happy to say that pretty much every department across campus has at least one experiential learning course available to their students. Many, many, many have more than one. And we have several courses that are available to any student, regardless of what program they're in. So we have a community engagement course. We have um, ICON, which is an amazing course experience where we bring together students from a variety of different years and disciplines, and they work on real world issues. So for example, um, one year ICON uh, works on trying to find ways of reducing food waste. And so the students all came up with different products that they pitched. And then the product that got um, that had kind of the highest score from our entrepreneurship team actually got funded and they got to do some stuff with that. So that's a great experience that happens outside of co-op, which is, which is quite unique. So that's on the curricular side, all the things that you can take as part of your degree. We also have um, co-curricular experiential learning and we have 11, 13 different categories of co-curricular and it's everything from um, uh, student leadership positions. So being a college president or running a student club, uh, volunteering on and off campus, working on and off campus, taking part in conferences, competitions, um, professional development, um, being a paraprofessional. So we have a lot of um, a lot of ways that students can embed themselves right into uh, supporting other students on campus, whether that's through our peer helper program or through our student support network, et cetera. So what we recognize at Guelph is all of that, all that stuff that you're doing in the classroom and outside the classroom is helping you to develop those skills, those knowledge, skills, and attitudes that you will need to be successful um, in your future. Um, we are also known at Guelph as um, our city is known as one of the most caring communities in Canada because of the quantity of volunteer hours that citizens in town put in. And uh, our university is no exception. Um, students volunteer a lot and are really, really heavily involved in community on campus. Um, which is kind of a, a Guelph vibe, like we love to give back and we love to contribute. Um, and so we have a team within our office, the Experiential Learning Hub, um, that focuses specifically on connecting students to community partners or volunteer work that might be relevant to them. And that's especially important if any of you on this call are thinking about uh, further education, you're thinking about going to vet school and med school, law school, um, anything afterwards, you're going to need to have some experience on your resume um, in order to apply. So this is a really great way to get started. And they run a number of programs in your very first year that are like really easy introductions to volunteering. Um, they have project serve um, days and weeks um, where it's just a week or it's just a day of volunteering. Um, and they can also do consultations with you. So they can sit down with you and you can say what your interests are, where you wanna go, how much time you have, and they can help make a match between different um, organizations that are looking for volunteers. So we can definitely help um, with that. In terms of how to get involved with EL, a lot of them are courses that you would just register for. Um, we have a catalog that showcases everything that is experiential. Um, a lot of the co-curricular activities do require an application, and that's where um, having that great resume and cover letter that we talked about for co-op is actually important for all of these things as well. And a service that our department offers is um, resume and cover letter reviews. So if you do, would, if you would love somebody to take another look at your resume or your cover letter, we have a fabulous um, 
a team of trained peer helpers, um, so there's students that have gone through the job application process um, who are available to give that those kinds of critiques and they can meet both virtually and in person, which is cool. So it's very convenient um, way there. Um, when we recommend starting to think about EL um, very beginning, like when you first start and get to Guelph, the first semester or the first year, uh, we really do emphasize like get settled, figure out how campus works, figure out how academics works. But we also encourage you to look into maybe some of those um, easy volunteering, those one day, one week type volunteering. And the reason why we encourage people to get involved sooner is we have found, or a lot of students have told me that when they get involved early, it creates more opportunities down the road, whether it creates opportunities for advancement within the role that they have because they've been there a while, whether it creates an opportunity where you're working with a faculty member as a volunteer and then a job comes up and they're going to hire you into that job because you've already been volunteering with them. So that's why we encourage students um, within their schedule to try to find as much EL as you can do that fits your schedule because it's going to open more doors and again it's going to give you those skills. And it's also going to make your professional and career development record look awesome. So the professional and career development record, um, which we call the PCDR, uh, is a it's almost like a digital resume that records all of the experiential learning um, that you've done, as well as any professional or career development activities you've engaged in while you were a student. It looks really cool. Um, it's interactive and it helps you to identify what those skills are that you're getting from those experiences and how you may be able to translate those into either a further education application or um, right into the workforce. Uh, it's a really, really cool new project that we just la launched this year um, and we're going to be continuing to add more and more to it. Um, so we're really excited about that. Um, I've talked a lot in general about what experiential learning um, is, et cetera, but uh, again, we think that it's often really helpful to hear right from students who've experienced it, what it's like. Um, so I'd like to turn over the mic to Alicia, who's going to talk to you a bit about um, her experiences with experiential learning at the University of Guelph. Take it away, Alicia. Hey, everyone. I'm Alicia. Um, I'm in my fifth year of food and agricultural business. Um, minoring in sustainable business. Um, I'm a co-op student. And while I'm not in an arts program, a lot of my co-op roles have been in, um, you're not necessarily bound by program when you uh, apply to co-op. So, um, but a lot of my experiential learning opportunities, um, they were all really influential for me. Co-op was of course influential for me. Um, my third co-op term, I now sit on the board of directors um, in that organization. Um, so I can also help answer some questions about that, but I really want to focus on some of the other kinds of experiential learning that you can um, get on campus and there's so many opportunities to like apart from co op and apart from uh, paid internships um, that can allow you to explore um, and learn in environments that you're passionate about um, so on campus. I worked for the, there's a work study program called Spark in the Office of Research Communications, which was the coolest experience for me ever um, because I got some professional journalism training um, and I was exposed to all of these really amazing academic projects that were happening um, that I would have never learned in my field of study. Um, so I was interviewing researchers who were doing groundbreaking research on like heart disease treatments and, um, you know, animal pathology and things that I never would have been able to explore um, in my program where I lar largely study like uh, resource economics. And um, so that was really helpful for me. I just, you know, I am a little bit of a nerd. So I do love my, my um, I do love learning in class, but so much of the learning that happens in your university experience happens outside the classroom. Um, so I also, um, I'm also currently a peer helper on the career services team, which Daniel had mentioned. We take, um, we take appointments from students and we can sort of help provide some guidance as far as career development goes, uh, resumes, cover letters. Um, I also work on campus for the fair department um, which is one of our resource economics departments. And Daniel had mentioned student volunteer connections, which I'm particularly like 
rah-rah about because I, I work for Student Volunteer Connections. We deal with a lot of those, uh, you know, community integrated learning um, events, projects serve, and basically connecting students with um, the local Guelph community, which is a huge um, part of, I would say, the University of Guelph culture, um, which is being connected with the community around you, being involved with the community around you. Um, but basically how I got involved, I wasn't doing any of these things in my first year. Um, I had a little bit of experience with experiential learning in high school. So, you know, I, I sort of did notice those things out, but also at the same time, I'm just kind of curious. Um, I just thought, you know, you should try some new things. And that's kind of my advice to you guys. I did DECA, which is a business uh, competition. Um, it exists in high school. So I was like, okay, I'll do the university one. Um, and that was really fun, but I didn't continue it past first year and that's okay. Um, I did some marketing for an organization on campus called Textbooks for Change, um, which also didn't go on past first year and, and that's all right. But basically how I started getting involved is I just started trying new things. I really encourage everyone to do that as well. Um, it's not the end of the world if it's not something that you end up sticking with for like all four or five years of university, you'll find other things. Um, but what it will do is it will create these um, connections for you. And also it'll allow you to figure out what you're really good at, what you really like, what you're passionate about. Um, and that will lead you to different paths. Like you'll end up doing different things and it'll all just be very exciting for you. Um, in your fourth and fifth year, there's largely, like there's a lot of capstone courses um, where you're gonna have a lot of experiential learning um, projects. Like there's a lot of hands-on um, projects in your upper years where a lot of the time you get to collaborate with local organizations or local businesses. Um, and those are all always really awesome. And there's usually some kind of like showcase or presentation where you get to present it to them. And a lot of these uh, local partners, they, they use the stuff that University of, of Guelph students help them with. Like they, it, it really helps them. And um, those relationships are, are so important to our students and to our community partners. Um, but my sort of advice is, yeah, just get involved, try new things. It impacted me in a really significant way. Like I said, I love learning in an academic sense, but so many, so many of the things that I've learned in my post-secondary um, experience have been from all of these extraneous um, roles that I've been in and, and things that I've done and things that I participated in and people that I've met. Um, it opened so many doors for me as far as my career. Um, I, I'm not looking for necessarily a job title. Um, I don't think it, it was going to help me clarify that, but what it did was I'm not looking for that. I'm looking for rather the kind of impact that I want to make with the work that I do. Um, and that has immeasurably changed the way I approach, um, my, my life basically, and um, my university uh, career, my post-secondary career, um, and the connections and relationships. And I, I would say this is probably the most important part, a part of uh, you know ignoring all the other things. I think if I had to pick the most important thing to me or the most impactful would be the connections that I made, the people that I met, the relationships I formed um, are, truly invaluable, like the things that you learn from those people um, in these environments, solving issues that you're passionate about solving um, is something that um, you just can't get inside a classroom. You can get lots of things inside of a classroom. I'm a huge proponent of, like, of it. I am, like I said, I'm a nerd like that, but it's just um, a lot of those meaningful connections and those, um, those experiences that will impact you in a way that sort of changes the way you, you view um, your university experience, that will happen um, in my experience through experiential learning and through trying new things and, and being curious and getting involved. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any questions about 
any of the specific experiences or um, just my experience, totally feel free, but I'll pass it back to Daniel and um, he'll sort of wrap it up and we can do a Q&A afterwards. That was amazing, Alicia. <laughs> and you, honestly, your story really resonated with me because that was essentially my story too, as a, I was, I started in environmental science here and then I switched into theater and I didn't really know what to do with that, except that I knew I loved theater and I was like, let's see what happens. And then it was by getting involved with the College of Arts Student Union and with the Wellness Center and starting to produce theater and working in the back end that I realized how much I liked administration and doing that. And that's what ultimately led me to my postgrad in arts administration. And I worked at a dance festival for a while. Um, but I, I, again, I credit all of that to my co-curriculars. Had I not gotten involved with the Wellness Center, had I not gotten involved, I probably would have been on a very different path now. So it really emphasizes what Heather said at the very beginning that one of the most important things I think about co-op and experiential learning is how much it exposes you to different things, um, different types of careers. I don't think anybody I know is like, oh, I'm in the career that I thought I would be in when I was five, right? Because who knew that you could work full-time at a university in administration, right? Nobody knew that at that time. At least it's not on the list of career options that the, the testing spits out for us. So that was really great. Thank you, Alicia. Um, so now uh, we have ended the formal um, uh, presentation. We have lots of time though for questions um, and we do have some that have built up on co-op. So I see Heather has come back on screen. Um, Heather, do you want me to ask them to you or have you been reading them? And uh... I have been following them here. Um, I have two, I, I see two. Can I get a co-op job anywhere in Canada? I'm an international student. Uh, so it's a little intimidating. Is that is that the first one that we are going to address? Uh, there's okay. actually one before that. A okay. Bit opportunities exist for environmental governance students in co-op. Okay, so I can talk about what's on our current um, flyer of what we have and some of the opportunities there and some of the employers that we've built relationships with. Well, let me just pull that up. So in this role, it's kind of going to be a mix of policy and environmental stuff. So if that's something that you're interested in, sometimes we get a lot of students who don't want to work in a lab, and this may be a program and co-op opportunities that may be a really good fit for them, but still make a contribution to the environment. So one of the positions that a co-op student in this program could go for is economic policy co-op. The student will have the opportunity to learn and experience and contribute to the agricultural policy development. Um, I'm sure as we're well aware, agriculture is a very big industry um, and is an industry that is actively hiring and looking for people. So this would be an excellent co-op opportunity. Uh, this will include assisting and supporting various projects, conducting economic research, analyzation on program initiatives, preparing reports, presentations and databases and reviewing data. Also research assistant is another role that some of our students have engaged in. Research assistants will assist in producing rigorous research and evidence-based insights on climate change policies. Um, for Canada they'll work with various research teams so this would be something that you'd be doing with the government of Canada. And uh, solid waste program assistant. So this would be something where you're working with different city, local, municipal governments. Uh, the successful candidate will work with city staff, residents, community partners, and business industries, contracts on waste mineralization and diversion efforts. So recycling efforts, trying to streamline those services. So our current employers that we are working with would involve the Environmental and Climate Change Canada, Ontario Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs, Imperial Oil, University of Guelph, different city governments. So definitely a lot of the policy environment mix. So that's an example of some co-op roles that you would be looking forward to. Awesome, thank you. And I just popped a link to, um, Heather uh, referenced a sheet that she's looking at. Um, I just popped a link into the chat that provides you uh, the opportunity to download any of those sheets for all of our programs if you wanna see the details that Heather is looking at. Um, alrighty, and I also wanted to mention Alicia, uh, has let us know that there are tons of environmental and environmental justice oriented opportunities in the community and campus. Guelph's also known as quite an environmental focused um, community as well as campus. So there tends to be a lot um, happening in the community. 
um, around environmental. And I know in particular, um, I was an environmental science student for a year. So I do know they have an annual symposium um, that's really incredible that student run every year. Um, the environmental student science exec or uh, student executive is quite um, active on campus. And we have an amazing opportunity through our sustainability office um, to promote uh, composting on campus, to do education around environmental things. So there's a lot of co-curricular experiences there too. So uh, let's move on to that next question that, that you had, Heather. Um, can you get a co-op anywhere in Canada? I'm an international student, so it's a little intimidating. So yet again, international students. I'm not an international work permit expert, but I can tell you the process that our international students go through in order to get their work permit. So once you are accepted into the co-op program, you'll be applying for a co-op work permit. This will be an open work permit, which allows you to work anywhere in Canada. And I want to be very specific with that anywhere in Canada, not in the United States, in Canada. So you would need to go through the process in order to do that on your own. University of Guelph cannot apply for a work permit for you. Uh, that's where the letter comes in from our office, though, saying that you are a co-op student. So that's generally speaking the process. I can't speak to every international student's experience, um, what that process looks like, but we do have international advisors for our international students here at the University of Guelph. And once you start at the University of Guelph, you can meet with one of them and go over this process as well as many other questions you may have as an international student being on our campus. So the general answer is yes within Canada, but there are steps in order to make that happen, so. Yeah, and both of our international student advisors are awesome and they're both accredited with um, Immigration Canada, so they can provide that kind of immigration advice, et cetera. Um, our next question is, um, for co-op, can we choose our placements or are we given certain choices and areas to choose from? So one thing is I want to remove placements from the vocabulary because you were not placed in our co-op programs. Uh, they are competitive work terms. This mirrors the experience that you will have once you graduate university and if you choose to not go on to grad school right away and to go on to working. So these are competitive work terms that you will apply for and that you will be paid for. You will be hired as an employee for that company that you are working for. So you are not placed. You need to put the work in. Um, as Caroline has spoken to, it requires work. I know Alicia is also a co-op student and she can tell you as well, it requires work. So you're going to have to apply much like what you have to do in the real world, but we will have co-op coordinators there to assist you with any questions you will have. Also myself and Suzanne as two co-op 1100 instructors will be your first person of contact um, within the co-op program and we'll be able to advise you and support you as much as, much as possible to make you feel confident and ready to find that work term opportunity. Awesome, and our next question is um, for psychology co-op program. Um, do you know, are there any opportunities Leading to social work or counseling? So I think there's something very important to remember about counseling. You have to be a licensed counselor in order to counsel. So I, I know I always get students that are very interested in, I want to be a counselor and that is great, but you're not going to be doing counseling work. Could you be working with a counselor? Um, possibly there could be some opportunities as a co-op student in an administrative role or an outreach role within not-for-profit associations to help with outreach events, uh, for addiction services, mental health. But the chances of you being hired on by a psychologist and working with them as a co-op student are probably not going to happen. So I think you need to have a realistic expectation of what your, your role will look like. And that's because counseling is licensed. Um, it's licensed in Canada. It's licensed in Ontario. You need a certain level of education in order to act as a counselor. But there are associations out there that do employment advising, mental health outreach, that are looking for students to help with education awareness, administrative support, research, and those would all be opportunities that would be likely for you to apply to as a psychology co-op student. And again, on the co-curricular side too, I used to coordinate our student support network on campus, which is a peer-to-peer -peer listening service. So there are some opportunities co-curricularly where you can be gaining that kind of, um, you know, small, small C counseling support um, of students uh, through peer models. Um, but you're going to find the same thing with any regulated professional is that there's mm -hmm. boundaries behind what um, can and cannot be done by unlicensed professionals just to protect the safety of others. But a lot of the other experiences that Heather mentioned, the administrative support, the program management, are all important skills you're gonna need. 
And also when you think about something like counseling, a lot of it comes down to how do you create relationships with people? How do you um, help support people with, um, by asking great questions? And a lot of those skills you can get in other ways um, from other places. And, and when you apply to professional school in counseling, whether you go on to a master's of social work or counseling skills, they're looking for that volunteer experience that kind of will, will um, show that you have an interest in the area too. And they'll look at your co-op experience as well very favorably because that's paid experience in, in the industry, essentially, whether or not you're doing direct counseling work or not. Absolutely. Daniel, I was actually going to add that. So that's perfect. A lot of students who are looking at going on to counseling because I uh, at one time was a career advisor and had many psychology students that would come in and look at counseling as an option. You will have to go on to a master's, but master's programs are now looking at more than just your grades. Yeah. So it's important, as Daniel said, to have that experience. And also, uh, we have something called the Peer Helper Program, which is a huge program. Daniel's very familiar with that more than I am. <laughs> Both of us have been involved in it, though. And it's a great opportunity for students helping students. So even if you just want to strengthen your helping skills, that's another experiential learning opportunity outside of co-op that you can do as a co-op student. Alicia has been a peer helper. I know we've had other students that have been peer helpers. And they do both. And they build a lot of skill sets that way. Yeah, and this is this is another reason why we recommend getting involved early. Like if I had a nickel every time I heard a peer helper say they wish they had become a peer helper in their second year, I would be a very rich man. Um, <laughs> if people, they delay it, they, they think they're too busy. They and, and experiential learning does take time. But what we've heard from students over and over again is that that time is worth it. For students that have, if you're an art student, you're going to look at your class schedule and be like, I have 15 hours of class a week. What am I going to do with the rest of that time, right? A lot of students who have schedules find that EL creates structure for them. Um, and a lot of students, like Alicia said about the connections, a lot of students say they meet people in their program that have similar interests. It makes it easier for them to find group mates for group projects. They find people with similar interests to study with. Um, and so there's, there's a lot of advantages to getting involved. And, and also speaking to um, like Carolyn, who is talking about being a commuting student, who is commuting to campus, sometimes getting involved in these activities gives you a bit of a home on campus, a place that you can go to. I know like our peer hub is like that at the, in the EL hub. Um, I know SVC is like that. It creates a little space that you can like drop your stuff off where you know you've got some friends. Um, a, a quiet place to study um, when you can't find one on campus. So it does create more than just experience. It also creates those connections and those networks. Yeah, Alicia. I will say on that note about the peer helper team too, um, both with the peer helper team that I'm on, on the career services team, and as well as the one that I help um, manage in student volunteer connections, like there are students who are in all different kinds of programs who come to be a peer helper um, in whichever department. And so, so, so many students, um, this is my fourth semester as a peer helper, so many students have credited um, like their career path completely changing because um, they're given this opportunity to um, constantly be put in these environments where they're one-on-one -on -one problem solving with other people they're forming these meaningful connections with them and helping them with um specific you know issues or or challenges um and learning to interact with all different kinds of students from all different kinds of walks of life with all different kinds of goals um so as far as the counseling and the the psychology experiences so many students who are in like bio programs or physics programs. Um, I know at least a handful who were like, I actually think I, I just really like working with people. Um, and so that experience just opens so many doors for so many people that the valuable connections and, um, and experience you get making connections doing peer helper program is, is just immeasurable for real. So we have another question that came in around the new CTS major uh, mm -hmm. and wondering about uh, what that looks like in terms of job possibilities. 
Absolutely. I, I saw that and I got it all prepped, ready to go. So it is one of our newer co-op programs. We are taking our intake for the first time in fall 2022, which is so exciting. Um, I think the important thing to remember is that co-op's been around at the University of Guelph for a very long time. So we have a lot of longstanding relationships with employers. And a lot of times when we're building these new co-op programs, we've already outreached to these employers to see what opportunities they have and what gaps they need filled with new talent coming in from our co-op students. So some examples of some roles that we're looking at is technical writer, and this includes technical work as well as content writing, create and maintain technical content for firms, including blogs, companies, news, employee tutorials, all online, which has become very relevant in the last two years, as well as digital heritage assistant, assist with the digitalization of media resources for library collections, scan, upload, and categorize images for the inclusion into databases, as well as digital designers for communication. So this includes create and implement communication strategies, campaigns, man manage the company's brand, and engage in corporate storytelling. Some sample employers for this include the City of Guelph, PCL Construction Canada, United Way Community Services, World Vision Canada, um, Peel Regional Police Manu Manulife Financial Co-op or Corporation and the Ministry of Education. So a lot of different opportunities that are coming through with this program and we're really excited to be having it at the University of Guelph. Thank you, Heather. And uh, that also just to mention that we have a big team, I think it's like 14 co-op coordinators and they're working year round to network with employers to bring jobs to campus. And kind of what Alicia said too, a lot of the jobs are not necessarily aligned with a very specific co-op program. A lot of them are open to many students in many different co-op programs. So um, yeah, so we're leveraging a lot of the relationships that we already have and uh, uh, to be able to do that. So I wanted to thank you folks. We only have a few minutes left. Um, Brittany's gonna pop a, a message into the window if you have other questions. Um, after the fact, you can uh, reach out to us at recruit at uogolf.ca. Um, I'll also pop in a couple of web links um, for our EL Hub website, um, as well as information specifically about EL and co-op. Um, we really want to wish you luck. I know it's a tough decision to make, uh, but we really want to wish you luck if you haven't made your decision yet, um, or if you're in grade 10, 11, and you're just kind of starting out. Um, we wish you luck on that, uh, that uh, journey, and we hope that uh, Guelph is, is one of your considerations. And for those of you who have offers and you're kind of weighing pros and cons um, between different offers, I hope that this has helped. And for those who have accepted um, your offer to Guelph, uh, that's awesome, and we're really excited to see you uh, on campus in the fall. Uh, definitely uh, come visit us for an in-person tour when those are available. And uh, we'd love to meet you next year. So thanks so much from all of us at the Experiential Learning Hub. And uh, thanks to our panelists as well for sharing your experiences. It's always great to hear from you folks. All right, I'm going to drop a few links into the, into the chat window. And that's it for us. Hope you have a great day. <laughs>